Alright, we'll get started here. Uh, so this is going to be a CAM tutorial for our standard training part for Railside Robotics. Uh, the part that we're going to be making is going to be, well, we're making a CAM for it in this video. Um, it's this part here. It's a weapon lock uh, for your combat robots. It's very simple. It's literally just a three-quarter inch square with a step mill into it, and then also um, a hole that's going to be tapped for a quarter twenty uh, drilled all the way through it. Um, you'll be tapping uh, manually by hand, not on the CNC, uh, but we will be drilling the hole on the CNC. Uh, the idea here is that this is kind of the handle for our weapon lock, and then we'll have a shaft that we can also tap or uh, thread to quarter twenty, screw it in here, and then from the other side you can also uh, like bolt in some sort of tag or something brightly visible. Uh, so everyone can see it and then on the other end of your quarter inch shaft uh, There will be a 3d printed like TPU part uh, That's friction fit on there for retention so it doesn't fall out uh, So that's the idea there. This is what the final part should look like um, I'll Close out of this. This is just uploaded as a step file I catted it in SolidWorks and then saved as a step file. It's also an Eris um, under this name so you can view it there, you can view it in the Railside Robotics uh, Fusion Team, um, and it's under this training part tutorial because I used it for this cam. So I don't want to save. Great, so just to start, this is the cam that we're going to be making in this video uh, that you're going to be learning how to make. Uh, this is our table here with all of our fixturing and setup for uh, the CNC mill itself, so this is what the inside of the CNC mill should look like on the table. And then here is our actual part. I'll turn the stock on here so it's visible. Um, this light gray that you can see through is our starting stock. And then the dark gray inside of it is what we're going to actually mill out with this CNC. So that's going to be our finishing um, piece. So to simulate here, I'll just go to setup, simulate, take a moment to load. Okay. And then I'm just going to run, let this play, um, and you can see what we're going to be making. So first we're going to probe the Z on the vise here, I'll speed it up a little, and we'll go over and we'll actually probe our stock. Change the comparison because I prefer that. Um, we'll probe the stock, the stock at the X, Y, and Z. Uh, they may tell you to change this. We'll go over that later. We'll face it down to the proper height. We'll take the end mill, do a roughing pass on the lower step, a finishing pass. And then we'll do the same on the upper step. And then we go into our drilling operation. So it's going to go through and it's just going to peck away at the hole until it's all the way drilled. Great, and that's the end of the process there. So that's what we're going to be making in this video. Um, so we can go ahead and get started. We're going to start from scratch here. <coughs> so uh, you can see I have four different documents over here. You don't need to have this many documents. You can do this in probably two documents if you need to. Just import your step file and then create the cam. Um, I just created these separate documents because we can, um, but again, they're not necessary. Um, but I'll walk through how we did those. So the cuboid stock, this does not need to be in a separate file at all, um, but we're holding stock in machines. Yeah, this is in the Bechtel Fusion team if it loads. We go here and we look at parametric models stock, and then you can copy this and then paste it into, I recommend creating a folder like I've done here. You can just paste it in here and it'll show up. Um, and that'll be your part. So this is nice. You can go ahead and change the parameters to the size of your stock. Um, it's set up with X, Y, and Z dimensions. So you can change this if you want. So if it's actually two by two by one, then I can change that. I'm going to leave it as one by one by two. Uh, because that's like what I'm just going to use for this. Um, so that's 
that's how you create your initial stock. Uh, again, you can also create this in the progression file, which we're about to make. Um, so I will go ahead and make a new file here, close out of the stock, and I'll save because we haven't actually done anything. Okay. Um, now, there's a few things you can do here. Uh, this is our progression file, so I'll go ahead and save it as like prog. Name it something useful and descriptive. Don't just name it progression or prog or something. Uh, this is a very bad practice, but I'm just doing it for the sake of time. Uh, there's a few things we need. So we need our actual part, so we can just drag and drop that in here. That's our part. Okay. Uh, we don't want to ground a parent. So this is our part. Now from here you can make some sketches and actually like extrude your actual stock if you want to do this all in one file you don't want to make your stock um, but we're going to do an insert derive uh, and we'll just throw in our cuboid stock that way so insert derive links it to the original document that you're pulling it from um, so if there's any changes made in the original document it'll update here uh, we'll do an insert derive again because we need actually two uh, stocks. But again, you can just create an extrusion for your stock. You don't need to actually have this many documents. It's really unnecessary. Um, okay, so now what we need to do... Oh, fusion. There we go. We can get rid of that. Uh, what we need to do here is one of these is going to be our starting stock and the other is going to be our like final stock. Um, what the machine sees as like connected to the part when it's done with its operations, what it doesn't need to machine away. Because we can't just like machine this entire part out of one operation. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to capture the positions, extrude one of these. And so our part is 0.75 inches high. So we're gonna do minus 0.75 and then also minus a little bit extra. So I'll do a 10th of an inch uh, that we can just machine off to make sure we have like a pretty decent uh, square surface finish. So that's that. So this is going to be our what's sitting underneath of our parts, essentially. So we can join this now to our part. You can press J to enter joins. You can also find it up there in the top menu. Join this there. We don't want it to be upside down. We want it to be right side up. Okay. So this is, you can see our initial stock here. And then this is what we're milling the part down to. Um, what we'll do, you can do this in two operations, but we're going to just make this part and then you can chop this uh, excess stock off in the vertical bandsaw and if you'd like you can face it in the manual mill. It should be very very quick, um, but that's just a much more efficient process than making a second setup uh, to flip this part over and machine off all of this excess stock. Um, so that's what we're going to do. You can see there's space at the, a gap at the top where we're going to be machining away, and then obviously all this material on the sides that needs to be removed. <laughs> so that's a progression file. Uh, if we want, we can just go to manufacture and start doing stuff in there. So you can skip to the manufacture part of this video if you'd like to make this all in one document. Um, I'll make a sec separate document just for organization purposes. Again, name this something useful. This will be your actual can, but don't just name it can. <coughs> okay. So now what we need to do is we need to insert derive our progression file. Again, if you're still working in that other file, that other file could be your can, um, your can file, right? This isn't necessary at all. Um, but it's just to space things out so it's easier for everyone to see like the process because you guys can all go into the Fusion team once you're added um, and then view these files. So we've done an insert derive again on our, this time our progression file. And you can see that this is no longer jointed. Um, nothing's like maintained in place. So we're going to rejoin this smack that there. And then we also want to join our initial and our final stock. Okay. We don't want it flipped. We want them to be overlapping because that's kind of how it's machined out of there. So this 
is our, I'll rename this to something useful. So that's our final stock. Uh, that just helps me keep track of it. So we'll change our initial stock here uh, using the opacity control. Let's do like 30%. So now you can see uh, through our starting stock to the part that we're going to be making. So now what we need to do is we need to go to work holding stock and machines in Bechtel. We'll go to tables. Uh, we'll use the VF2. It's a <laughs> typical 3-axis CNC machine uh, with a smaller workspace, which is fine for this part because it's really tiny. Drag it in here. Okay, we want to import the VF2, so we'll click OK. Right, so we'll go back here. Great. So now, issue here is this link here it means that it's um, updating with what's in the Bechtel Fusion team. So any changes we make here that they make in the Fusion uh, document are going to like conflict with each other, cause issues. So you just want to break the link. Capture position. And that means we can change these parameters and uh, mess around with this as much as we need to. Um, without it causing issues. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to joint our stock, the bottom of our stock here, to the center of our vise. Now the vise that we're going to be using is this one. It's a Kurt vise. Um, these two are for holding on to very small surfaces that are machined flat. Um, this vice doesn't care so much about what surface it's clamping onto, so we're going to use this one uh, because we're dealing with just uh, typical scrap material from the Bechtel stock room. So you can see there's a diagonal here, and the midpoint has a point. So this should be centered between our two vice jaws. We'll joint our stock there. Press OK, and you, bring, you can see it brings everything over there, centered between the vice jaws. Uh, important note here, the vice jaws aren't actually on the outside of the stock right now. They're intersecting, which is not good. Um, so what we want to do is we'll make our VF2 active, modify the parameters, and then we're going to find the jaw gap of the Kurtz, because the Kurtz is what we're using. Um, you can see it's less than an inch right now. The, uh, remember what your stock dimension is. It was one inch in my case, so I'll go change that to one inch. Make this the active document again. And then you can see these aren't intersecting. It's the perfect distance apart. <coughs> All right. Um, so now we need to deal with this floating around in space because having things unconstrained is never a good thing in CAD. So we'll just join this point here to our origin. OK hide the origin again because it's large and nasty and now we can't drag anything around it's all fixed in space okay so now we're ready to start actually with the cam so if you're making this all in one uh, file like I said earlier and uh, I told you to skip ahead to manufacture this is the part you want to be paying attention to well I guess you wanted to put the fixture in too but we need to go to manufacture now um, so this is where we're going to start making actual our setups and our toolpaths. So we'll go new setup. We want to make sure it's set to milling because this is a milling machine. It's not a turning machine or cutting. Um, it's just milling. Um, so we'll select our machine. Remember we use the VF2 uh, table so we're going to have to use the VF2 from the cloud library. So we'll select that. It should populate here. Excellent. So. Now what we need to do is select our work coordinate system. So the origin for this should be selected point here. So uh, for the WCS, it automatically selects this point over here, which is not what we want. There's a little ball here, and it says WCS goes here. I'm going to select that. Make sure your z-axis is going up, y is going towards this device, and then x is away from the devices. Um, and that should be good. We'll select our model, and for this, we're going to want to select both our final stock and the part CAD, 
um, because model is what the CNC program is going to see as like its finishing product. So if you just select the weapon lock, uh, in this case, the part that we want to machine, um, it's going to think that all this material down here needs to be removed as well, which isn't necessarily a problem if you're um, just paying close attention with your cam creation, but you're going to want to select both of these. It's much makes things much easier. Our fixture is essentially just the table, everything that we don't want the uh, end mill or anything to run into. So we're going to select PF2 as our fixture. Okay. Then we'll go to our stock tab. There's a bunch of different options here, so you don't actually need to CAD your stock, which is pretty nifty. But we did, so we're going to select from solid and select our stock. And it tells you your dimensions of your stock, which is very nifty. Uh, part tab, okay. So part attachment point, we need to go to selected point because it didn't know where the um, vices were in relation to the machine. So we need to position that. Uh, you can see it's got like the gray outline of the machine here. Uh, when you go to selected point, it normally automatically like sets it to be on this table, which is where you want it to be. If it doesn't set it so it looks like this, so this point is lining up with this table, you just need to select this point over here, and it should then look like this, which is what you want. <laughs> right, so then we'll go to post-process. Okay, so you need a program name or number. This is going to be any four-digit number that doesn't start with nine, and when you upload the cam to uh, the machines, it's what uh, the program is going to appear as. It's not going to appear as like camp v2 or whatever it's your program name is. So I'll just mash the keyboard. It's a typical strategy. This is 3458 is decent. Don't make it like a super obvious number because a lot of people will probably use that. Uh, the machine WCS offset should be 1. If it's not, they'll tell you when you get go in to get your um, cam approved to change it, but that's not a big deal. It takes all of like 2 seconds. Um, yeah, so I should mention now that um, this cam itself isn't approved by Bechtel, but it is like just a standard cam process. So uh, when you go in and get it approved, like they may tell you to change, oh, change which uh, tool you're using based on like what they have, what isn't broken. Um, so don't worry about like getting the tools exactly accurate. Um, that's not not an issue. Uh, that'll like it's gonna change based on who you're talking to at Bechtel and everything. So we'll hide the Haas V2 here because it's really big and it gets in the way. Um, okay, so now we've done our setup. So it knows it's a milling operation. It knows what's our what our fixture is, what our stock, what our final part is. So we're gonna go and start doing some operations. First thing we need to do is probe. All right, this is that first operation we did when we simulated. This is so the machine actually knows where the vices and the stock and everything are. Let's go to tool. Select the tool if it ever loads. I'm going to go to cloud libraries again. And we'll scroll down. We'll find the library for the VF2. And in this case, it's the VF4. Oh, I need to plug in my computer. Um, for this operation, we will be using the only probing uh, option here, which is the 20 probe standard. One second, I'm going to plug this computer in. OK. Uh, we're back. All right. Sorry about that. So we're going to select the only probe option we have available. There's, no, there's only one preset, so we'll select that. Great. So don't worry about the feeds and speeds, multi-axis, no. Geometry, OK. So we need to select a surface to probe. We want to do the vice first. Uh, we don't want to probe the X and Y. We want to probe the Z for the vice so we can get a height measurement. Um, so we've got that. Then we go to clearance heights. Clearance heights should be just fine. Um, and then this is important for override driving WCS. We need to select that. And that should be 2. Okay. I don't know why the work coordinate system is different for probing, but it is. Um, and if you don't set that, things could break or go terribly wrong with your program. So make sure you set that to 2. Okay. So green check mark means that our toolpath is valid. Um, there's parameters, toolpath, and process stock. Um, so we can go ahead 
uh, I should cover simulation. So for simulating, if you want to simulate just one process, you right click on the process and click simulate. If you want to simulate all of your processes, then you right click upon setup and click simulate. Uh, it doesn't matter what we do in this case because there's only one process. But um, we'll go through and start the simulation. We're just going to go through, tap the device, and come right back up. Very nice. So now we're going to do the same thing again for probing the surface of our stock, except for in this case we want the XY rectangle. You can see it automatically selects the same probe as last time, same feeds and speeds. Uh, you just need to select the geometry, and then again, the WCS should be 2. Okay. Uh, no errors, that's good. If these are anything but like green check marks, uh, you've done something wrong, and you need to figure that out. <laughs> um, and you can just ask the people at Bechtel, or ask me, or uh, someone who knows what they're doing. Um, but it's likely there's just a faulty selection or something's not quite right in your settings. Um, so now we've finished probing and we'll go and there's a bunch of different options we can do. There's also 3D drilling, multi-axis if you're doing multi-axis milling. Uh, we're just doing 2D stuff and then a little bit of drilling today. So what we want to do first is face the top of our stock. So just select our tool. We want a face mill for this. You can also use an end mill because um, the surface finish doesn't matter so much for this part. It's just, it's largely functional. Um, and also that saves you from having to swap out your face mill for an end mill for the next operation. So we can filter by face mills. And then I'm just gonna select this one. Again, depending on what tools they have available, um, they might tell you to select a different one. Um, so there's a bunch of different options down here as well for presets. We're using wrought aluminum. That's like any aluminum stock that's extruded or rolled. So that's pretty much going to be most of your aluminum stock. So we'll select that. Automatically populates all of these. And multi-axis geometry automatically selects the top here because that's the surface we want to be facing. Heights are fine. Passes. We want multiple depths. <laughs> and a finishing step, right? So this will go over several times. It's not going to cut, try and cut it all at once. And then it'll also do a finishing pass, which is uh, smaller. And then it's going to do a different freed rate so you get a better surface finish. Not necessarily necessary, again, um, because we don't really care so much about surface finish. And this matters. Let's go through, check that. Great. And so now we've got our pass. Now you should be simulating taking a look at these even if there's a green check mark just to make sure it's um doing what you want it to do so you can see it does three little passes there which is very good that's what we want so we'll exit out of that um so now we're going to actually start uh machining our uh, stock so we want to do 2d contour this will be using the end mills uh, it automatically populated our face mill, which is not what we want. We want a flat end mill. And of course, we have to actually select VF2, VF4. This gives us all of our end mills. Uh, we'll use a half inch end mill because there's no reason to use anything smaller. Um, we also don't need the extended end mill because this is not a very deep cut. Um, so, definitely, I mean, you shouldn't be using a larger tool lengthwise than you need. Uh, so, we'll select this one. It gives you a copy. Uh, preview of what it looks like. Again, broad aluminum. We'll select that. Go to geometry. I have to hide my stock here. So you might have to hide the stock to make some selections. I'll select this contour first because that's what I want to machine first. Heights are fine. Passes. Okay. We want to do roughing passes. We don't really care about multiple depths. Uh, so we'll do that. And then it gives us a finishing pass. We don't need multiple finishing passes. Um, number of step is one. Great, so this is all fine here. Uh, linking, don't need that, okay. Green arrow, or green check mark. Let's simulate it to make sure it's okay. It's gonna go in. You can slow down the simulation by using these, this slider at the base. So again, yeah, it does a roughing pass and then it goes through and removes a little less material with a finishing pass. So now we're going to do the exact same thing with this upper step. So we're going to do 2D contour. 
Uh, again, it automatically selects our end mill. We'll select our tab. We'll do roughing passes and click OK. And some of those settings you may need to change um, depending on how they want you to run this or their personal opinions on things. Um, but this is just fine. This is a pretty optimal machining setup here. So again, roughing pass, finishing pass. Great. So now we've got that. So that's all of our actual um, face milling and everything we're going to need the end mill for. So we're going to do a drilling operation for this center hole here. Uh, so we need to find a correct tool for this. Now, for a quarter 20 hole, you don't need to be drilling a quarter inch hole with a quarter inch drill bit because um, that's going to create issues, right? Uh, you can't tap a quarter inch hole to a quarter inch bolt size. So uh, you can find online there's a lot of tap drill charts. Um, the drill size we want for a quarter 20 tap is 7, number 7 drill, um, but they've also conveniently labeled it quarter 20 tap drill in the Fusion library. It's uh, 0.201 inches in diameter, which is notably less than 0.25 inches. Um, so you're going to want to select this drill here. Our material is aluminum, not steel or stainless steel. Uh, I guess you could actually machine this part out of steel if you have the stock for it, um, or if you can find the stock for it. It wouldn't be terribly hard. But uh, there's no, really, no reason really to machine out of anything other than aluminum. It's going to go faster and be easier to machine. So we'll select that. It's going to populate this. Don't need multi-axis. So for geometry, we need to select the face of the hole. I'll go through from the side here. Now, this is important because this is the one we're going to need to actually change our heights for. Okay, so we want our hole to be drilled all the way through our part here. Um, and right now, it just drills the tip of the drill to the base of the part. So only the tip is reaching the bottom. Uh, there's still these little triangles of material here that we need to remove. So there's a drill tip through bottom option, which you can do. And that drills the whole tip through the bottom so that this, uh, at this height of the part, um, we have a hole the diameter of the drill bit which is what we want. Um, but we also might want to go a bit further just to make sure that our hole is pretty clean and it's cutting all the way. Um, so we can set a breakthrough depth of, say, like a tenth of an inch. Um, and that'll go down and drill an extra tenth of an inch there, which is pretty good. There's no reason really not to do that unless you have a really long hole and you can't afford to go um, much deeper because either your drill bit will start wandering off or uh, it'll put too much stress on the drill bit. But in this case, this is just like a, what will this be? This will be just over 0.85 inches of drilling, which isn't a big deal. So we definitely want to do our breakthrough there. Um, drilling cycle, we'll leave that at wrapped out. Uh, where is our dwell? Ah, okay, that's where it'll be. Right, so we'll just leave it wrap it out because this is something that we don't want to do and I'm going to demonstrate why. Here. Okay, so we'll simulate this. We go through and drill, it goes straight in, takes out all the material and it goes straight down. Now that's really bad because you're probably going to break your drill bit or your hole is going to be really inaccurate um, because there's a lot of stresses going on um, you're just plunging it straight into the material. Um, so what we want to do instead is peck at the hole. Drill a little bit at a time. Um, and that'll also break up the chips that we're cutting because if you just plunge in like with the rapid feed, uh, you'll get a really long strand of chips and it can wrap around the drill and like fly around and swing around and be all dangerous and not fun. So we're not going to select that. Now there's two options here. There's chip breaking, partial retract, and deep drilling, full retract. Um, this will depend again on what they tell you to do uh, when you're getting your project approved. Um, I'm just going to do full retract. The only difference is partial retract doesn't come all the way out of the hole. Full retract drills down a little bit and then pulls all the way out of the hole. I'm just going to choose that because um, I want to. So 
dwelling period, I'm also going to set that to 0.05 uh, seconds. And what that does is when it reaches the bottom of the hole, it's just going to stay there for 0.05 seconds. That makes sure it's um, cutting all the way around uh, for a little bit of time before it pulls back out of the hole. Uh, you might be able to imagine if you're just going in, going in, it hits the hot bottom of the hole and comes straight out, you might not cut the bottom of your hole super cleanly. So I want it to stay down there a little bit. So I'll click OK. Uh, there's no errors down here so far. Simulate. Start the simulation. You'll see it's going to go peck away at the material and pull back out of the part every single time. Uh, the only difference between this and partial retract is partial retract, again, is not going to pull all the way out of the part. So speed this up. Yep, it finishes without any errors, so that's good. So, now we'll simulate the whole process here. Just start to end because you should do this to get an idea of what your process is going to look like. So we'll probe, probe, speed it up a little, face, face. I know you should go slower than this. I just know this works, so I'm going really fast. Okay, um, so that is your entire cam. Uh, we know that it works. Um, it's all good there. So you're at this point. You can go into Bechtel with this and um, like get it approved and get a reservation for the CNC and start manufacturing. I'm just going to walk through a couple more things in terms of the process for all of this, and then some options here in the simulation that are pretty cool. Um, so first, for the simulation options, we have the option that I go to by default is comparison, and I like this one because uh, if you remember all that blue stock that was extra, that shows material that needs to be machined away. Green here is um, material that it's at the right dimension. It's what the machine sees as it should be uh, at like the proper dimension. Uh, it's the final part and then red is when you th it thinks you've uh, removed too much material so you can see at the bottom of our hole here uh, it's red they think we actually removed too much material and we technically did that hole doesn't line up with what we catted but we deliberately drilled the hole deeper than what we catted um, so that's not an issue for us uh, an option is material and this it's CNC machining I mean you're gonna have the same material uh, for your whole part, so this is really silly. You don't need to do that. Operation here is pretty cool. You can see face milling was this tan operation. Purple is our first contouring operation. Yellow is our second contouring operation. And then like, this kind of brownish color is our drilling operation. And then also tool is another cool feature. You can see we're going to need three tools, so that's two tool swaps. Um, which you can get rid of again with like using an end bill to get rid of the material on the top of the part. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but the face mill is this blue, end mill is like this orangish tan color, and then purple is our drill. So those are our options there. Um, can I set the simulation? Great, so that is the completed cam. Uh, from there, yeah, you just go into Bechtel. Um, get them to approve it, get a reservation, um, and then you can actually upload this to ma the machines and uh, use it. There will be uh, people there, they walk you through everything, they tell you what you're doing wrong, what you need to be doing, um, how to do everything, so you don't need to worry too much about that, you just need to show up. Um, but yeah, also so important thing in the fusion team here. Once you join the fusion team, we do have a railside robotics project, uh, which you can contact me or Monon about to be added to. Uh, you'll be able to see all of the Bechtel stuff, particularly this is the important one, we're holding stock and machines, but also railside robotics. Um, you can see we have a lot of pro projects in here. Um, I recommend creating a folder inside of the railside robotics project for anything that's going to have like more than one file um, just for organization purposes. Uh, if you're doing a personal project, you can go to the Fusion team, which you need to be added to before you can actually start making the cam. Otherwise, you can't access all like the tables and stuff. 
Um, you can go here and you can see this is again real site robotics, all this stuff. But if you're making a personal project, you can do create project, make sure security is set to secret, okay? Because um, if you set it to something else, everyone can see it. And we don't want to see everyone's projects. I mean, you can imagine there's like hundreds of projects running and we don't want to have to scroll through all of those. So make sure you set your project to secret, give it a good name, and then you can work in there. Um, but if you're doing anything railside robotics related, you can do it in the railside robotics um, fusion team. Uh, I would say for this project, you don't really need to do it in railside robotics because it's like so simple. Um, you're not going to need a lot of help from us, hopefully, on it. And um, having a bunch of training part cams in here would get pretty confusing. Um, but you're free to use it if you'd like. Um, this cam, well not this cam in particular, but the cam I demonstrated um, and the stock and the progression and the part file will all be in the Fusion team. I'm not going to delete them. Uh, so you can, you'll can, you be able to see them. Uh, if you want to, you can actually go into Bechtel and use those if you don't want to make your own cam. I would still recommend creating your own cam. I mean, it clearly doesn't take very long. Um, and once you get the hang of it, it can be pretty fun. Um, so that's really all I have for you. If there's any questions, just uh, let Manun or me know and uh, we'll get back to you. Um, if we don't know an answer to something, we will find out for you. Um, yeah, just don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, but yeah, try and get this done. It's a lot of fun. It's a very useful project and getting into Bechtel, I mean, really the only issue is getting in there the first time. Uh, it's a little bit daunting. So our goal here is to try and make this as easy as possible for you. Uh, so I would recommend going in and manufacturing this part sometime. It should not take long at all. But yeah, that's all I have for you. Um, I will see you guys uh, some other time.